everyone and welcome back to my channel i'm tinsley from bliss and faith so if this is your first time here thank you so much for joining me here if you've been here for a while over several years you probably haven't seen my face on camera for a while probably for about 10 years <laughs> so back in the day i used to do beauty guru videos that was pretty short lived y'all i used to do like beauty and hair videos and things like that so yeah um since then quick little update this is not what this video is about but i you know got married had kids a lot of career changes so i kind of finally circled back around to instagram or wow instagram youtube instagram too youtube and yes yeah, so i'm here doing planning videos and um kind of like planning business related possibly some lifestyle videos so you'll I'll be incorporating um, a lot more videos on my channel that are not just planning. So, you know, um, there'll still be planning videos where you'll see me do my plans. But I'm also going to do some, you know, face-to-face -face videos and talk about some different topics on planning, business, budgeting, possibly entre entrepreneurship, possibly motherhood. So we'll see where that goes. But anyway, what we're here to talk about today is... Ah, planner conferences. So I've been wanting to do this video for a while. I just finally gotten around to like feeling comfortable getting back in front of the camera again. And this is a topic that I have been wanting to discuss for a while. One of the big reasons why I wanted to discuss it is because, you know, I think that, well, for one thing, a lot of different communities have conferences so pretty much any industry communities industries whatever pretty much any industry you can think of has conferences so if you ever heard of comic-con that's a really that's like the biggest uh comic book conference probably in the world um there are financial conferences there are blogging slash influencer conferences which i've attended a few of those before i got into planning and they were a lot of fun. A lot of conferences are set up very much the same way. Um, you you know you pay a fee can be anywhere from hundred to a thousand dollars to attend a sometimes one to two to three day conference. Most of them kind of happen over the weekend, um, usually starting on a Thursday or Friday and going through Sunday. The two the main day being Saturday, um, sometimes Friday, depending upon the type of conference it is. Um, Friday can be kind of a main day, but yeah, most conferences are typically over the weekend. Of course, there are different kinds of conferences in the professional sector as well. So if you're a pharmacist or a doctor, um, you know, like a drug rep, a lot of those um, industries have conferences too that are actually like week-long conferences. But anyway, getting back to kind of content creator, influencer, planner conferences. So personally, I have been to three or four kind of content creator blogging slash content creator conferences. Um, and then I have been to one, yeah, I've been to one planner conference. So, and then back when I worked in the professional, in the private sector professional, um, as a professional, I actually attended several conferences and seminars because um, I have my degree in HR. So I attended a lot of conferences and seminars based around, um, the human resources and the business industry and things like that. So I have had my fair share of being an attendee. In addition, when I was blogging, I was kind of like a, a mommy motherhood lifestyle blogger. Um, right at the time where I started to you know, have kids and things like that, when I was pregnant with my first son, I started blogging um, in that particular like niche or so to say. I always kind of blogged before, but it was just kind of like random stuff. Everyone had a blog back in the day. Y'all know y'all got on, you know, Blogger or GeoCities or whatever and had a blog so, or Pop Sugar. So I'm taking it back way old school. But I started to blog um, professionally or not, well, rather more of like, I don't want to say professionally. I started to blog like really consistently and kind of built a brand around that blog. And then I transitioned to Bliss and Faith, which has been like my blog slash website slash business for the past, 
maybe six years or so, six, maybe five or six years. So anyway, so when I got into the planner community, of course, I came to find out all about conferences and things like that. Um, for me, because I had kind of been there, done that with conferences, I wasn't really too big on really attending them. But I came to realize that with the planner conferences, they're a lot of fun. And of course, you see everybody going to them on social media, and it looks like so much fun. Very much like the blogging conferences and the info conferences I had been to. You know, you see all of these, um, like the, the, the conference, the people that put them on. Um, and they, they're posting people like cheering and having a great time and pajama parties. and Everyone is just having a grand old time. And while that, that is true and can be true, I want to be completely honest with you and let you know that that is not um, always the experience. Um, when it comes down to conferences and putting them on and being a, a conference organizer, it's a business, y'all. Like, it is a business. So you're paying them so that you can network with other people who share that same interest or hobby. That's point blank in discussion what it is. I'm not saying that these organizers are not passionate about whatever the topic of the conference is, but whether it be planning, content creating, X, Y, and Z, it's a business. So between the money that you pay for the registration fee, um, they get sponsors. Um, they're also, um, you know, whatever other business they're running is promotion for them as well. So it's a business. So, you know, that that's that's one thing. Let's make that very, very clear. It's any type of conference you're going to go to, it's a business. Now, granted, with a business, you're going to have, you know, you need to generate revenue, but you're also going to have expenses. So these conferences, they do have to pay for speakers. They have to pay for the anything they're going to give out as far as swag. Now, a lot of times swag is donated. But there are times where, you know, there are certain, um, you know, maybe content uh, conference organizers who are having to pay to have a certain product or they may, they may want to give out buttons or pins and they may have to actually pay for that because, um, you know, maybe whoever they want to get it from is not willing to, to sponsor it. And they just may want that particular product or they still may be able or the sponsor then may work out a deal where they're going to pay 75 percent and then you know maybe the other 25 percent is you know promotion or whatever or just a gift from the um from the sponsor so a lot of people kind of wonder so like in the planning community you have the the biggest conferences go wild and then you have kind of smaller ones under that so you have like planner con you have um and of course there's different planners around the nation like in the united states there's also planner conferences in europe and there's also uh there's also planner conferences in canada now i'm not sure where other conferences exist i'm sure wherever there's a planning community i'm sure there are conferences and things like that um in those places as well but as far as i know in north america and in europe they do have planner conferences. So the biggest ones in the planner community, as I mentioned before, are Go Loud and Planner Con. Um, there are, there's also like the Chicago Planner Conference, there's Winter Planner Land, there is, um, there's several, several of them, but the two biggest ones are Go Loud and Planner Con. Now I'll be the first to say that I personally have not been to either one of those. I did have plans to go, but, you know, between trying to coordinate you know, work, child care, everything like that. I just haven't gotten around to going. Plus, the tickets sell out so fast. And that's another thing. If you want to go like to the really big conferences, the ones that are really popular, that are in really high demand, you're going, excuse me, you're going to have to jump on their, on their websites, on their registration pages pretty quickly on the day that the um, conference or the, the, on the day that the registration opens. Now, uh, one thing I will, one tip I will give you is that if you are, if you've been to that particular conference before, a lot of times there'll be an opportunity for alumni to purchase tickets ahead of time. So that's a good way of kind of having a better chance of securing your, your ticket or your space at the conference. So you know, that's definitely tip number one if you want to attend these conferences. But I want to really dig into today. Um, 
like the conference experience. And I have been to, like I said, this is something I've seen from a lot of the conferences I've been to through, throughout industries. But, you know, they show a lot of the pictures of everyone having such a great time and everyone being best friends. And just because you all share a common interest, you're just all going to click immediately and we're just all going to be hanging out. No, that ain't it, y'all. Um, I will tell you that I have seen and at times felt myself, even though I am very extrovert and very outgoing, so I can make the best of anything for the most part. Sometimes being at these conferences and these events can be extremely isolating. And for as many, for as, as shy as you are, there's two more people that are as shy as you. There's, you know, two more, two other people who feel uncertain, who feel uncomfortable, who, um, who is, who are overwhelmed. Like the fact that there's a thousand people, you know, in, in one space. So that's kind of like, you know, there's a pretty side and an ugly side to these type of events. And I would say that definitely the feeling of um, what's promoted versus the actual experience does not always match up. Also, there's a lot of promises that are made when you come to these events. So sometimes there's activities, speakers, um, things that you look forward to that don't happen or you may encounter a certain person that you follow on social media and be excited to meet them or just see what they're like and only realize that they are a 180 from what you thought and i experienced that at um, the most recent conference that i went to um, which was winter winter planet land i met a bunch of nice ladies I, met, I mean it was it was a lot of fun a lot a lot of fun but i highly recommend if you can go with a friend or, you know, bring, you know, a friend, a sibling, you know, whoever, so, but bring someone with you. Especially if you're a person who you're not very outgoing, not very extroverted, and you would feel uncomfortable being around a lot of people. Um, because the same clicks you see online, these same people who come to these conferences, they still click up all together. And it still it feels like very much like high school. And like a lot of them, they're not letting... They don't really let anyone else in. So the people who you see that are friends online, if they go also conference, then they're gonna all be clicked up together, and it feels pretty much like high school. And y'all, like I got to high school a long time ago, so I have I have no time for that. You know, I have no time for that. And for me, I'm not gonna force my way into anyone's circle. Like I make my own, and I keep my circle small at that. So you know, if things like that bother you, um. I would say, you know, for me, like, I don't even idolize, like, celebrities. So even someone very known in the planet community or in any community, that is, I'm not going to, like, jump in their face and, like, be all up in their grill or whatever. Like, you know, I'll speak. I'll be nice or whatever. But, like, I don't really consider, unless you're, like, you know, somebody really for real famous, like, yeah, I mean, you're cool or whatever. Like, great to meet you. but. You know, but you'll see a lot of fanboys, fangirls, fanboys. And so if that's something that will bother you, um, you know, that's something to definitely consider. Um, so you, you'll see the fangirling, fanboy. You'll see um, the clickiness. And you'll see the people who definitely kiss up and suck up to the organizer or they want to be the center, you know, the central focal person. They want to be the most known, the most popular person at the event so they're typically the most loud, the most lively. And, you know, again, I'm I'm not hating or whatever because they're taking the opportunity at the conference to seize the moment and promote themselves and promote their business. But you have to understand that everyone who's going to these to these conferences, they're looking to get something out of it, something more out of it than just attending the conference. They're looking to network, they're looking to promote, they're looking to you know, get eyes on, you know, get more followers. They're looking to get more eyes on their business or on their social media. So you have to understand there's always a motive and a flip side to what you see being marketed and even down to the individual. You know, people are completely different a lot of times online than what they are in person. So that person who seems very outgoing and very approachable on their Instagram stories I've experienced that, you know, witnessed it firsthand. And I'm thinking, wow, this person seems really nice, really sweet. 
and they were just like a complete, mm, you know, like you could just tell. You could say they walked around with an attitude. They were not friendly. They stayed in the same circle of people, didn't really try to, you know, speak to anyone or branch out. And this is just observation. You know, um, there were a few people who they try to, who I saw, you know, they definitely try to come across as very, very nice online in their YouTube videos, on their Instagram, but they were complete mm, in person, you know, and it's just like, wow, like, are y'all serious? You know, like, so everything is everything that glimmers is not gold. And that's the thing y'all, you know, you really want to understand when you are engaging at these kind of events, you know, I'm not saying that if you approach these people, they're going to be difficult or they're going to be, you know, mean, but what I'm saying is everyone is a personality in front of the camera or on social media. That's what you do. I mean, even right now, like, I mean, this is pretty much like how I am in person because I'm just very, you know, straight to the point, very blunt. But still, like, if you if you come off too strong to me, I'm going to be like, whoa, you know, even though I'm very friendly and I'm very extroverted and I don't meet a stranger, you know, people are still people. So though you may interact with them online, you have to understand at these events, like, you still don't really know them. You know, you're still kind of a stranger. So you have to approach um, approach everyone with that with that mindset. And not just think that, I mean, even though like I have a, um, a friend who I had previously been in communication with for like the past year. And even when I met her at the conference, I was still like, you know, it's just like very, very respectful. So, you know, that, that's definitely something something to consider. Um, I will say that another part of the conference is that there may be additional costs that you have to incur. So a lot of times, most of the time, uh, accommodations are not going to be included. So transportation. Uh, like basically food, lodging, transportation is not going to be included. Occasionally, the conference organizer may arrange transportation to and from the airport, which is great, or to and from, you know, maybe a shuttle from, from here to there, or maybe the, the property that the conference is on. But just be prepared to provide your own transportation. Um, a lot of times, they may provide one meal a day. So bring snacks, be prepared to pay for your own food. Um, things like that. As far as alcohol goes, that all depends on the conference. A lot of times they do have like an open, um, a bar, a cash bar. Sometimes depending upon the scale of the conference, they may have an open bar. I don't drink, so I don't really care about a bar. But um, the last conference I went to, they had a lot of snacks and refreshments out and, you know, an endless supply of like soda and juice and all that stuff. So I had no, no real complaints about, about the food. But a lot of times, you know, conference organizers don't, that's not as important to them. You know, they're focused on getting the swag, getting the sponsors, um, getting the speakers. And so the things like meals and they're just, you know, so just be prepared for that. As far as lodging, that's most likely all the time going to be on you unless you're a speaker and they're paying you to come in and speak at the conference. So definitely account for that. And then on top of that, account for if you're going to stay, if, if the conference is at like a hotel, you'll want to account for if you can stay. So a lot of times conference organizers will, um, I completely lost my train of thought because I, somebody called me and I'm filming on my phone. Um. I don't usually I don't usually film on my phone, but I just wanted to, you know, film a video real quick and then want to go through like just looking out the memory card and all that for my DSLR. It's a lot, y'all. So anyway, I think I was referring to oh, so I was referring to to the lodging. So a lot of times for conferences that are going to take place, well, even a lot of times if the conference is going to be at even at like say it's not at a hotel, it's at another facility, they'll um they'll coordinate with the uh, hotel, the a close by hotel, or if the conference is actually at that hotel, they will kind of reserve a block of rooms. Um, it's only a limited number. So they'll reserve a limited number of rooms and you can, a lot of times, they'll get, you know, a, a, a special rate as well. But you'll have to, you know, be responsible for booking your own accommodations and paying for them and things like that. Um, if you're not going to stay on the premises of the conference, say if it's not at a hotel room or it's not at the designated hotel, I mean, at a, ho at a hotel room on the, you know, where the conference is actually taking place, um, then you'll need to keep in mind 
uh, that you're responsible for your own, not only accommodations at another nearby hotel that is still within some type of decent distance, you know, because you're responsible for your own transportation of the conference facility. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. And then also you have to consider what time of the year is it? So if it's like during the holidays or during the summer and say the conference is like at Disney World. You already know that Disney World during the summertime is packed. So a lot of the hotels are going to be booked out. Holiday, holiday time. A lot of hotels and things like that are going to be booked out. So these are things that, you know, go into that pretty ugly side of, of planning. It can get really expensive, you know. So by the time you pay for your registration, by the time you pay for your transportation there, so say if you live across the country, you're having to fly in to the conference. Not only are you having to pay for that plane ticket, you're having to pay, pay for transportation to and from the airport. And if the conference is not at your hotel, you're having to pay for transportation from your hotel to the conference um, venue. So that's another thing to, to consider. So when you are looking at the price of a conference and thinking about attending one, you not only want to think about the financial side of it, the financial implications of it and how expensive it may be. Um, and if you're writing it off for a business expense and things like that, that's a whole nother story, you know, how you categorize that. And again, it's all that. But I'm talking about just for the, the normal planner attendee. And, you know, so that, that $200 just from the registration to attend the conference, in which conference prices are constantly going up every year, but that $200 can very quickly turn to 1000 or 1200 So it's something that I think you should definitely sign, you should definitely budget for a year out, maybe even, you know, 18 months out to make sure that you have considered all of the um, variables that go into, you know, paying for the planner conference, getting to and from there, food, you know, uh, possible child care if you have children or, you know, if you're taking care of, of a parent, things like that, or if you're going to bring your family. You know, sometimes people will go to these conferences and they'll make a family trip out of it. So then you also want to consider the social side of it, not just at the conference, but outside of the conference. You know, you and some of the other attendees may possibly want to go out, you know, to dance or for drinks or for sightseeing during downtime of the conference, or maybe the day before or the day after. So these are some of the things that you should definitely consider from the financial side to the, to the actual being at the conference and how you feel, to how conferences kind of come to be, why they exist. And, you know, how organizers are actually making a profit off of these conferences, which they definitely are. And they're making a very lucrative profit. And I'm not discouraging anyone because that's capitalism at its best. I mean, everything you do especially here in America, people are trying to earn money from. So I'm not saying, oh, don't go to conferences because, you know, that person's going to make money from it. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, what do y'all say people to do? You know, like people have to make money in some way. Um, you know, you have no problem buying a product from a celebrity who gives two craps about it on the TV, but you know, you don't want to support a small business. That's another thing to consider. But if you have an issue with the with the conference organizer, don't feel obligated to support that person, even if you have friends and you know, planner buddies who are gonna be attending that event. For me, I don't care. You know, we'll have to just wait to meet up at an event where uh, you know, it's put on by someone I believe in and trust. If there's any shady business going on or anything like that, you know, I have to, you know, go on to, to, to the next event. So don't feel discouraged if you can't, you know, go to an event and you can't participate. You can always live vicariously through all the other attendees via social media. And at the end of the day, I'm going to tell y'all, like, you go, you have fun, and it's over with. Like, you're not sitting here. You're not really making memories, like, at these things. Like, I mean, you are, but you're not. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're you're only going to talk about it for the next week or so. And then it's on to the next thing in life. So those are kind of my, you know, tips, thoughts, and insight on kind of the, the good, bad, and ugly, or the pretty and ugly side of the whole, you know, like conference as a whole, specifically planner conferences or influencer content creator uh, conferences. And yeah, so if you have any questions, leave them down below. You can find it over on Instagram at Wisdom Faith. My shop is wisdomfaith.com where you can find everything over there from planner accessories, like planner covers, dashboards, dividers, 
And I also um, sell functional stickers, so full stickers, and I also sell sticker kits. So a little shameless plug there. But if y'all have any questions about planner conferences and specifically my experience, uh, I will try to stay away from like, you know, super specific details, things like that. And I honestly haven't had a bad experience at any of the conferences I've been to. Of course, you know, again, like I mentioned with the marketing, the marketing is there to attract people. And, you know, just like the movies, you see the trailer and the preview as the movies and you're like, oh, okay. You know, so there's always that chance that it's not going to live up to your expectations. But um, hopefully you don't have an experience where you go to something that was marketed one way, you get there and it's a whole nother deal. I personally have an experience that to a really crazy degree, there's always going to be a part of it that you're like, oh, okay, this kind of wasn't like what I was expecting. Um, something that, that can be on, on the good side and something that can be on, on the bad side. But yeah, let me know what y'all think in the comments below. Leave me your thoughts. Any questions, feel free to drop them down below. I will absolutely do my best to answer them. And yeah, I hope that this video was insightful. Um, I thought like there's a couple more points I want to kind of go back and touch on a little bit more specifically. So I think I'll make separate videos for those. And um, we, you know, we'll go from there. I definitely will, I'm going to go over a video about swag and sponsorships and things like that. And um, I want to speak to that a little bit more. So look forward to that. I'm not going to say that it's coming out super soon, but definitely look forward to that. And yeah, until next time, thank y'all so much for watching. Feel free to check out some of the videos on my channel. I have a ton of plan with me's up budget videos up so if you're looking to you know get into planning or you know things like that if you just enjoy the videos i have a ton on my channel and if you're looking to get into budgeting or want to get your budget squared away and things like that check out some of my budget with me um videos and you know that may give you a little bit of insight and help on that note but yeah guys so thank you so so much for watching please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and until next time i will talk to y'all later bye